We're going to look at the energy of 2023 so you can work with this energy to your higher and greatest good. Because it's happening whether we know it about when we're informed about the energetic environment that we are existing in and kind of what's compelling us to think, do, and behave certain ways. It's really helpful to work with that energy rather than be at odds with it. So as we look at this, how do we figure it out? Well, 2023, we add up 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 3 equals 7. So we're going to look at the number 7 today. Energetically, we've got for the energy types, a type 2 and a type 2. So again, we're really in that heart energy of learning how to be um, in our modern world of a lot of technology, how to be heartfelt civil people. We live in a time where it's uh, the way we interact, the communities that we're a part of look different than they did even 10, 20, and especially 50 years ago. And we're learning how to bring our heart to this new way of being together on a planet where we know more about each other than we ever have. And every single thing that's happening on the planet at any given time, <laughs> because there's that many, there's that many outlets. I mean, just think alone in, in the last five years where Netflix was one of the original streaming services and then how many more have birthed themselves since Netflix and even the last five years. There's so much visual stimulation. There's more shows than, there's hundreds of shows now, hundreds if not thousands, when there used to be three major networks you could choose from <laughs> and then cable kicked in. Anyway, 2023 really represents the seventh chakra. The energy of seven is one of driven by inner wisdom. Driven by inner wisdom. Let's look at, I'm going to call it the year of the three eyes. The three eyes are insight, inspiration, and insight, inspiration. Dang it, I got to Intuition. Start. Yes. Thank you. Okay, I don't have to start it over. That's it. Insight, inspiration, and intuition. Those are all being activated in the year of 2023. They've been activated. It's going to go up a level. Why the kind of the pros and cons of this, whether you let's say you don't know anything about it and you're a very logical thinker and you keep making choices based on your logic and their fear based decisions. OK, you're going to keep running into roadblocks, stumble around more struggles, more hurdles, just a rocky path that you keep tripping over more rocks, more struggle more stifling. We're being asked, things are falling apart for a reason in a way. You know, you think about it, that the structures of humanity as we've known them are, they're kind of disappearing in our cultures in a manner. We have new ways of being together. That's purposeful to our benefit if we'll rise to the occasion and look toward into our inner wisdom to guide us, driven by our inner wisdom, our insight, our intuition, our inspirations. It's like the, the walls have been removed, folks, and we got to tune in internally, check in with ourselves and say, what is correct for me? What is correct for me, my family? What is my deeper wisdom guiding me to choose here? Rather than a fear-based decision and one that you've just done out of habit because you should do it that way. Shoulds are not going to work. They are being challenged by the energy changing. And so as you move forward and tune into your inner wisdom, you let go of what doesn't matter in your life. There's a lot of things that we have opinions about, things that we have commentary about, and it doesn't matter. It plain simply doesn't matter. Think back to today, if you've had some time go by in today. N share in a comment one thing you put your attention on that ultimately, there, I'm even shaking the video, it does not matter. It doesn't matter because it doesn't impact you. It's really not even your business and it wasn't your decision. It doesn't matter. We're going to be asked to let go of more and more the things that do not matter so that we embrace the things that do on our life journey, our life path. How do you do that? You just remind yourself, I'm getting, you know, it doesn't matter. My husband and I will remind each other in a kind way. You know, I really, why do you, don't let that matter. Don't let it matter to you. Let it go. 
Just breathe it out. Big inhale and exhale. Your intuition's gonna be activated through your crown chakra. I'll teach you the crown pool. And one of the practices that you would really benefit from is meditation. I'm gonna talk about traditional meditation briefly and then what I call active meditation. Many of you choose a word for the year. I have my creation journal. This is a form of active meditation for me where I'm taking my conscious mind and giving it a very targeted focus and letting everything else go and really focusing in on what I want to create as I work in my journal. So that's an active form of meditation, but I've already written my word for 2023. I have other, I'll write my intentions for the year before the year starts. And then as we move through the year, I'll continue to fill in the monthly spaces, what I want to create each month, my intentions, important dates that I want to create different outcomes in, my word for the month, and my gratitude for the month that we've previously experienced. And then I'll actively do my daily creation process. I do it the night before. I know some people get up and do it first thing in the morning. This is for uh, any other notes or energy sketching to help activate the energy of what you're creating. It's a fabulous tool. This is active meditation that it takes your mind off other things and it requires you to focus in in a creation process. You can have music playing or something soothing in the background, even something that energizes you, that keeps you active. Most of you know about stationary meditation where you're actually sitting, doing mindfulness. There's apps for this. There's processes that can take you through, you know, a short just a few minute meditations to much longer ones. Some people will meditate up to an hour a day. And that whole goal of that is to silence the mind and become present in the body. That can be particularly challenging for some of us that are more um, active in our energetic expression. I'm a type three, type ones and type threes would find this a little more challenging. The mind actually gets busier for me if I stop everything. I either have to have a mantra I can chant over and over I have to have something that I'm putting my attention on that just quiets everything else and puts me in present moment awareness. I actually use my Tibetan singing bowls. This is the seventh chakra bowl. Look how it's just a cute little bowl, but it represents the tone of the seventh chakra. I'll play it for you as we close today's video. I have a whole set of chakra uh, singing bowls and I have some other bowls as well. In fact, I've recorded many uh, sound healing audios as sessions in the Carol Tuttle Online Healing Center. Those are fabulous tools for meditation. I like to play the bowls while I'm meditating. It gives me an activity that I don't have to think about. Another way to do active meditation is to go on a walk with, you could play the bowls, you could listen to calming music, flutes, native flutes, indigenous type music. You don't want to be hiking because that's going to require your attention to specifics as it's going to be more technical. You've got to be able to walk in an area. It could even just be around a park or something where you're outdoors. So there's not a lot of thought to where you're going and having to pay attention to where your feet are stepping. So active meditation actually works for those of us that can be challenged by stationary meditation. So what's your word for 2023? It'd be fun for you to go back and watch the video from 2022 and to see how accurate it was for how we experienced this year. I actually did that and it was really fascinating to me that I'm like, right again. <laughs> I just am grateful for my ability to read energy, tune into things and, and help you learn how to work with this energy to your benefit. And so, let your inner wisdom guide you. When you're up against something that you all fear is coming up, if you've got a, someone telling you differently, you're looking a lot to a lot of outside opinion because you're nervous about the decision or what you're meant to do as you move forward in your life, notice that's going to filter in and bombard your inner wisdom. It becomes interference. You won't be as confident in what you're receiving. 
It's one of those scenarios where if you don't listen to yourself, you'll say after the fact, oh, I knew I should have listened to myself. What's speaking to you in that manner? Let go of what doesn't matter. And let's open up the crown chakra with a simple crown pull to just imagine opening the top of your head to let the inner wisdom flow in from divine energy, from nature, from pure whole consciousness. Deep breath in and out. And as we close up, thank you for watching. Subscribe because that helps the channel grow and help in create more awareness because that's what I'm all about. Accountability, consciousness, awareness, and really being the active creators that we are. And thanks for hitting that subscribe button. I'm going to play this as we just now...